Welcome to our church, a church of grace. Here we preach Jesus. He came, he lived, and he died in our place. And not only have your sins been forgiven, they've been erased. Here we want you to know that God loves and is for you. And it's not because of or in relation to anything that you do. It's because his love is infinite and everlasting. So to answer the question, if you are asking, we care less about your past and more about what's ahead. We care not about where you've been, but where you're going instead. In this church, we believe that God, he is on your side. He wants nothing more to bless you and to fill your life. The Bible tells us, go into all the world and preach. This commission handed to us to extend our influence to reach. Reach the broken, reach the hurt, reach the wounded and the lost. Reach the desperate, reach the downhearted and those that have been forgot. This message of grace, the heartbeat of God, is not for our quiet church corners. It's for the rooftops, for the city gates, to be broadcast across all borders. So as we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us come together and join us across the globe to tell the greatest story, the greatest story ever told. His name is great. His love is big. His grace is real. Welcome to our church. You are welcome at our church. Hey, everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday, and I thank God that you have come by and joined us at our online campus right here on Facebook, or YouTube, or wherever you are. I want to say to you that February so far has been just an exciting time. Me and Pastor Tina are somewhere in Australia resting and restoring and getting ready for what God's about to do in 2021. And what we've asked you to do is join with us on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights with the youth on Friday night, hangouts on Saturday, and Sunday night prayer for the month of February so that you can get ready for when me and Pastor Tina come back with a blueprint March 7th of what it's going to look like and what we call church is about to change forever. One significant thing that I want to tell you and remind you of is that God gave us a banner for the year, and it's called Friends and Family, that our focus will be to build relationships authentically so that we can help carry our burdens and help get excited about what's going on in our lives. So no matter what we see, no matter what they say, we can celebrate or stand strong together. And that's what family does. That's what Jesus did when he, we became joint heirs with him by his sacrifice. And the Father invited us into his kingdom and called him, we call him Abba Father instead of just God or Jehovah. He became our Father. We're no longer orphans. We've been adopted into the family. So as we focus on friends and family, I hope you partner with somebody in the next few Sundays and get excited about March 7th. It'll be here real soon. But right now, let's get into worship. Good morning, good morning, world changers. How about you stand to your feet as we worship our King, our Savior, and our Lord of Lords. Let's sing, We Are Chosen. We are a chosen generation. Call forth to show His excellence All I require for life God has given me I know who I am Let's sing that again, we are chosen We are a chosen generation Call forth to show His excellence All I require for life God has given me I know who I am I know who God says I am, what He says I am, where He says I'm at. I know who I am, I know who God says I am, what He says I am, where He says I'm at. I know who I am, I'm walking in power, working miracles, living a life of favor, cause I know who I am. Working miracles and living life with favor 
does not know who I am. Let's sing back to the top. We are a chosen generation called forth to show His excellence. All that we require for life, God has given us. We know who we are. Amen. Come on, let's sing it together. We are a chosen. We are a chosen generation. Call for to show His excellence. Come on, you can dance a bit this morning. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What He says I am. Where He says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What He says I am. Where He says I'm at. I know who I am. Working in power, working miracles, and living life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power, I'm working miracles, and living life of favor. Cause I know who I am. Sing oh, 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 I'm working in power, working miracles, and living a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm working in power, I'm working miracles, and living a life of favor. Cause I'm take a look, take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? Cause I know. Take a look, take a look at me, I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? Cause I know who I am. I'm walking, I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm working miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. Sing oh, oh, oh. Lift up a shout of praise this morning. Declare that you are the favored, that you are the chosen, you are the righteousness of God. God, we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor because you have chosen us. We are a chosen generation. We are not by accident. We are chosen. You chose us, you formed us, you held us. We thank you, God. We give you glory this morning. We give you glory every day, God. We just worship you, God. We worship you for who you are, for who you were, for who you are, for who you will be, which is the same. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus blinded all my darkness, sparked my heart within. Grace and mercy lit a passion into my sin. Now, like a city on a hilltop, I'll shine through the night. I am a lamp made for his glory. I will not hide. 
I've been touched by a fire. I've been touched by a fire. So let the world come and watch me burn. Love will never be extinguished It's alive and wild and free I'm overtaken by His power The Spirit in me The Spirit in me The Spirit in me Oh, I've been touched by a fire So let the world come and watch me burn by a fire let the world come and watch me burn shout it from the rooftops shout it till everyone has heard you ready you're going to sing Jesus has changed my life his name be lifted high Jesus has changed my life, His name be lifted high, this holy fire is burning inside of me. Jesus has changed my life, His name be lifted high, this holy fire is burning inside of me. I cannot hold it inside, I cannot keep it quiet, this holy fire is burning inside of me. Hold it inside, I cannot keep it quiet. This holy fire is burning inside of me. I've been touched by a fire. So let the world come and watch me burn. Hey, shout it from the rooftops, shout it to everyone. Has Ready? We're going to sing that again. Jesus has changed my life. Here we go. Jesus has changed my life. His name be lifted high. This holy fire is burning inside of me. Jesus has changed my life. His name be lifted high. This holy fire is burning inside of me. Hey, I cannot hold it inside. I cannot keep it quiet. This holy fire is burning inside of me. I cannot hold it inside. I cannot keep it quiet. This holy fire is burning inside of me. I've been touched by a fire. So let the world come and watch me burn. Shout it from the Shout it till everyone has heard. I cannot hold it inside. I cannot keep it quiet. This holy fire is burning inside of me. I cannot hold it inside. I cannot keep it quiet. This holy fire is burning inside of me. I've been touched by a fire. Let the world come and watch me burn. Shout it! Shout it from the rooftop. Shout it till everyone has heard. I've been touched by a fire. So let the world come and watch me burn. Shout it from the rooftops. Shout it till everyone has heard. Sing that one more time. Oh, I've been touched by a fire. So let the world come and watch me burn. Shout it from the rooftops. Shout it till everyone has heard. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no My feet. 
Well, good morning, uh, wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I'm Cole Stringer, and it's my pleasure to be here with Pastor Kyle, just sharing from the Word of God. Uh, Lord, we just welcome you into this, uh, this meeting, Lord, and Holy Spirit, have your way. Touch our lives, touch our hearts, Lord. We just thank you that you've never left us just defenseless, or you've never even left us. So, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here this morning, in Jesus' name. Hey, uh, I want you to open your Bibles, if you got there, to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, this is something I'm sharing that's strong on my heart just at the moment. We live in times of great crisis, possibly the greatest crisis in the last hundred years. And uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and if you read with me from verse 3, but even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing. Verse 4, whose mind the God of this age has blinded. Um, you know, as I say here, many don't even know who caused, the, you know, this crisis, the pandemic, things like that. They don't know if it's God. They don't know if it's the devil. 
Uh, sometimes even, um, you know, preachers are out there. If God didn't do it, he's allowing it and things like that. So what does that word actually say? Well, first of all, God is not the God of this world. Satan at the moment. If we read here, it says here, whose mind the God of this age. In Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, in verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Not strong in yourself, not strong in your own abilities or whatever, your own men. You know, I'm a, I'm a self-made man. Well, how's that working for you right now? He goes on to say, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And then he talks about put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. So, as I say here, you know, let, let's just be honest. I hope it's okay to be honest. But, you know, you need to learn to hear God for yourself in this day and age. Um, most of the prophets, 99% of the prophets missed it big time. I don't even know anybody uh, that, that picked the the COVID pandemic was going to hit and then how many you know are on about Trump was going to be re-elected well how's that going right now and I'm not just against prophets or prophecy but you know if you miss it surely you know we should apologize and say hey I missed it I believed I heard from God hey I've made a mistake I've made them before but just be honest but so how do we know you know how can we absolutely be assured you know as I say you're talking to people. I've just had friends that are on ventilators for this COVID. One pastor friend passed on. So, you know, some of the family, how do you talk to, to family? You've got unsaved people saying, if there's a God, how can he allow these sort of things? Well, first of all, God is not the God of this world. It's impossible to have faith if you're not sure who's causing these things. Insurance companies, they call it an act of God. Some of you might remember years ago, the, the greatest, one of the greatest uh, uh, oil disasters in history was the Exxon Valdez. You might remember that. Run aground, huge you know, quantities of oil, destroyed a lot of the wildlife, and it was put in the media. Some of the media said, an act of God. Well, don't let facts get in the way of a good story, but the captain of the Exxon Valdez was drunk. I don't think God gets drunk. Maybe, anyway, we'll go there. So I've heard preachers even today say, well, if God didn't cause it, he allowed it. Hello, God will allow anything you'll allow. If you want to go out of here and rob a bank, God's not going to stop you. He's certainly not commissioning it, that, but we have a thing called free will. You know, God didn't, doesn't even demand that you be saved. What does he say? You know, I set before you life and death, but you choose. Choose life, but it's your choice. As I say... God will allow anything that you and I'll allow. So if I can just maybe base one thing, get one thing straight, God is not the God of this world. There are laws governing this earth. There's natural laws. You know, these natural laws came into force at man's fall. You know, there was a curse placed upon the earth, and we live in a fallen world. If we just understand, you know, people are blaming God, wars and famine and, and sickness, but God is not responsible how many of you remember jesus rebuked the storm he didn't cause the storm he rebuked the storm think about that he took authority over the natural laws is that right to bless humanity the bible says he went about healing all the repressed of the devil oh oh is that right or not think about it. you know it, 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 raising the dead if we go to the gospel of mark how many of you believe the bible See, it's not what I say, you say. It's what the Word of God says. That's what we have to base it on, particularly in this day and age. And in Mark chapter 3, and if you read with me here from verse, uh, let me pick it up, and verse 23, so he called himself and said to them, how can Satan cast out Satan? Verse 24, for if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Now think about that. Is that right or not? A kingdom divided. So if God is causing sickness and then Jesus is healing the sickness, if God is causing the storms and Jesus is rebuking the storms, then somebody's schizophrenic. A kingdom divided itself cannot stand. 
If, a, if Satan is, has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but ha, it says him, but has an end. So, you know, in this day and age, just the simplicity, how do we work out who's... It's simple enough to, to work out who actually is causing these things. In 1 Corinthians, I, I was just looking at the scripture just recently because I was talking to a friend along these lines. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm sure that I'll be able to put it up on the screen for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, give me a moment. And in verse 26, it says, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. He says that before that, um, in uh, verse 25, for he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy, it says, the last enemy, that will be destroyed is death. So, you know, you can work out pretty simply who's causing these things, sickness and death, and it's not God. You, you know, really, I've passed it a number of years, but you shouldn't even have to say these things to believers. Uh, what's a believer supposed to do? A believer is supposed to believe. That's what he's supposed to do. So it's easy to work, work out the source of where these things are coming from, and that should bring peace to you. You know, how can you possibly have faith if you're not sure if God's doing this to test you or try you or even allowing it to happen? You know, in John, Gospel of John, somebody out there needs this anyway. I, I, I just sense that somebody out there must need this, that reassurance right now. You know, and as I say, uh, you know, I've had to bury people, young people, you know, and families, often unsaved family come up and they say, well, you know, how, how, how can there be a God if he allows this sort of thing? And they'll say, you know, that this person was a wonderful person and served God. No one, deny, no one doubts that. But we live in a fallen world. And in John chapter 10, I love this passage of Scripture, it says, the thief does not come except to rob, is that right? To, to kill and destroy. So there is robbing, if something's, robbing you, your, your life, your family, your health, your, whatever, to kill, destroy. But he says, but I've come that you might have life and that you might or may have it abundantly. So it's pretty, is that right? I mean, pretty straightforward there. You can't get more, much straightforward, more straightforward than that. He says, the thief comes only to rob and kill and destroy, but I come to give you life. I come to give you life. In John 14... In verse, um, let me pick it up here, verse 9, Jesus said, Have I been with you so long, and yet you've not known? You've not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Is that right or not? So how can you say, show us the Father? He says, if you want to see the Father, just look at me. You know, is that right or not? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father's in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. The Father who what dwells in me. So if you want to see God, have a look at Jesus. He went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil, rebuking storms. Is that right or not? Think about raising the dead. And so it's pretty easy to work out where the source of these things that are coming. Just look at, you want to see God at work? Then look at Jesus. Uh, I'm going to say a couple of things. Uh, Pastor Kyle can correct the theology next time, <laughs> is that right? But I believe a lot of us have been religiously brainwashed. We've not been Bible taught, we've just been religiously brainwashed. We've just swallowed things, that right? And sometimes it's even preached. You know, and I don't profess to know it all, but I, after 40 years in ministry, if you didn't learn something, you'd be a moron. And things that I, I you know, I've, I've sat and I've listened to some supposed preachers and they're blaming God. If God didn't cause it directly, he was, you know, or responsible, then he allowed it. I, I feel like saying, mate, you should be driving a truck. Uh, you shouldn't be preaching, you know. Can, can you read? Just read what the Bible says. The thief comes to rob, kill, and destroy, but I come to give life. I come to give life, and not just life, but life, zoe life, and have it more abundantly. Think about it. You know, a lot of times I think, you know, the human mind, we're trying to solve spiritual things. You just can't read this book as an ordinary book. 
it, 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 it's the Spirit of God speaking to us. You know, in the New Covenant, Paul prayed in tongues until he received this res- revelation and then he wrote it down. And you're going to have to, you know, be in tune with the Holy Spirit before you begin to get revelation from this Word of God. Romans chapter 12. Hey, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I believe we live in extremely trying times, but also we live in times of great opportunity. You know, you can talk to people that maybe you've never been able to talk to about spiritual things. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a what? Living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And don't be what? Conformed to this world, squeezed and molded to the way the world wants you to think. The media, is that right? They're brainwashing us to think in a certain way. Don't be conformed, but be what? Transformed by how? By having hands laid on you. I'm not knocking that. By having prophetic words spoken. And there's nothing wrong. But the way that you renew your mind, is that right? It's through the word of God. That you may be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? That you may prove what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Unless you renew your mind to the word of God, you will never know the perfect will of God for your life. Now think about that, renewing your mind. So what we begin to do, I believe, is we begin to renew our mind and we begin to speak what God's Word says over our lives, over our families, just saying what the Word says. By His stripes I'm healed. I don't feel healed, but that's what your Word says. And it's not power and authority. I give to you over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, Luke 2, 19, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Hey, I've been harmed. I know a lot of my friends being harmed. So something's wrong here somewhere. But I have to start to renew my mind over and over as I meditate on passages of Scripture. The Word says, power and authority I give to you over all the power of the enemy. I, I, I love that. And so I start to speak it, even though I don't feel it. I start to speak those situations. It goes on, is that right enough? That you may be able to prove what is the good and the acceptable, the perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me that everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So we do have that faith, but we build on it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Not what the media says or the world or sometimes even preaching, but renewing our minds, is that right? That, that building, that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And the best way to hear it is coming out of your own mouth. You'll believe yourself more than anybody else. Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 2, praise God. You know, I just think somebody out there, you know, somewhere out there, you need to hear this right now. You know, you, you, uh, uh, so many people sort of lost hope. You know, it's sort of hopeless. But, you know, you, you can't have absolute hope and faith if you're not sure and who's causing these things? Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I will never leave you nor forsake you under any circumstances. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in what? Yourself? No, I don't think so. Strong in your own ability? I don't think so. You know, we, a lot of times we have faith in ourselves. It's worked for us lots of times, you know. Uh, uh, we've got more degrees than a thermometer, Dr. Fahrenheit, in whatever, he, you know, your, y- 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 your ability is. Well, how's that working for you now? All of a sudden, you know, I don't know how many people I've had call me business people and I say, you know, Pastor, I've done this all my life and it's worked, but all of a sudden it's not working anymore. Well, hey, it says what? Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Not just self, but strong. Years ago, I like history, I like, I like reading history, and just before the, the Second World War, there was these huge, huge airships, they called them dirigibles, I think they called them, and there was one in Akron, Ohio, and it was coming in to land, huge thing, and so, you know, a lot of the sailors, it was a Navy thing, they grabbed a hold of the mooring ropes to tie it, but all of a sudden a gust of wind picked it up and took it back up, and there was dozens of men hanging from these ropes. And, you know, after a while they started to drop and they were killed. One, two, three, the strong ones hung on long. But eventually just one man hung there, just one man. 
And it was hours before they could bring this airship in and moor it. And when they landed it, you know, suddenly the ambulances come out, the medical people, and they grabbed him. They're going to race him off, and, you know. And he says, hey, I'm fine. I'm cool. No problem at all. They said, well, how did you manage to hang on when everybody else dropped to the death? He said, I didn't hang on. I just got the rope and I tied it around myself and I just hung and swung free. He said, I didn't even struggle, didn't have to stress, didn't have to hold on. He said, I just tied the rope around myself and I just swung free. That's called grace, people. Instead of struggling and pushing and, and giving it your best shot to hold on till the end, you just take the grace of God, wrap yourself in the promises of God and just swing free. It says, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that's in Christ Jesus. I, I, I love that. You know, can I share with you, the, the Bible is progressive revelation. You know, much of the Old Testament doesn't really reveal its types and shadows. You know, their spirits were dead to God. They, they were spiritually dead people. That's why they had to live under the law. But now we are born again by the Spirit of God and we have access, is that right, to the Spirit of truth. So that's much, and that's revealed in the New Testament by the Holy Spirit. And if you begin to realize that under the Old Covenant, God is not actually doing much of it. He warned the people of the consequences of sin. If you do this, then these curses will come upon you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? In Deuteronomy, is that right or not? I said before you, life and death, blessings and cursings, you choose. But if you choose the way of sin, there are certain ramifications. Is that right? So I think about the law of gravity. Let me give you an example. The law of gravity works for all of us. Born again, spirit-filled, unsaved. If you don't believe in that, get up on top of a building and jump off and see if the law of gravity works or not. It works for all of us. And so, you know, you tell your kids, don't, don't do that. Is that. There are consequences. Hey, if you're going to sin, there's consequences for that. We do reap what we sow. God warned us, whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. So the cause is man's sin, not just individually, but in originally it was Adam. Adam sold us out. And we live now in a fallen world. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, when God first created the world, think about this in Genesis 1. Let me pick it up and look with me in verse 31. And then it says, Then God saw that everything he had made, and indeed it was not just good, but it was very good. Not just good, but very good. And so the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Not just good, he says, but very good. And so Adam was given dominion over this planet. And unfortunately, he sold us out. And so now we live in a fallen world. Think about that. Sold us out. So now the, the devil is the God of this world. You don't believe me? Then go to Luke with me. You know, it's not what I say, you say. It's what the Word of God says. And you have to, you have, to have that firm foundation for your life, knowing when these tests and trials come, who the cause of them is. Where is coming from? Luke chapter 4. Let me pick it up here. Give me a moment. I'll get the page. Luke chapter 4, verse 5. Then the devil, taking him, that's Jesus, up onto a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, to Jesus, All of this authority I will give to you and their glory. For this has been what? Delivered to me. Is that right? And I give it to whomever I wish. Now think about this. The devil's showing him all the kingdoms and he says, this is my dominion and I can give it to him. Is that right? It was delivered unto me. Now if that's not true, then it wouldn't be a test for Jesus. He'd just say, you're a moron. You don't even know what you're talking about. And so it has to be true for it to be a test to Jesus. What he's saying is, bow down and worship me and I'll give you this dominion back. I'll give it all back to you. Satan is the God of this world. Is that right? Verse 7, Therefore, if you will worship me, all of it will be yours. And Jesus answered and said, Get behind me, Satan, for it's written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Now just think about that. Uh, uh, is it right to be honest? I mean, hello, Jesus 
is no fool, if this is not true, he's going to say, you don't even know what you're talking about. You know, that's just a con job. But it talks about it had been delivered. Who delivered? Adam did. So Satan is the God of this world, but he doesn't have to dominate you and me. That's the good news. Jesus paid the price and Jesus defeated him once and for all. Is that right? So, but we need to recognize that source of that opposition. You know, if you can recognize that source, you can stand against it. You're not going to stand against it if you think God's doing it. Second Timothy again, Second Timothy chapter 2 and uh, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Man, I love that. Grace, unmerited favor, unearned favor. Instead of struggling and, and trying to do it all yourself, like that man that hung from the airship, just wrap yourself in the promises of God and you can just swing freely. Is that right or not? Not trying to do it, not strong in yourself, not strong in your own ability. You know, I, I, I love the Gospel of John. If I can give you a little bit of, little, little bit of uh, eschatology right now. You know, the synoptic Gospels are Matthew, Mark and Luke. They're written maybe 18 months within Jesus' death. But John's gospel was written 60 to 65 years later, at the end of his life. And he, much of what's in John's gospel aren't in the other three gospels. John doesn't even call himself by name. He calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. But Jesus loved them all. But only one man has revelation of that, and it's John. You know, he talks about, you know, the, the law was given by Moses, but grace, he says, came through Jesus Christ. Now think about this. If you see the last, the, the picture of the Last Supper, the painting, and uh, Peter's up there, he's got his foot in his mouth, is that right? He's full of himself. Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? Who's going to sit at the right hand of the Father? But all that John wants to do is put his head on Jesus' breast. He's the only one that hears the heartbeat of God. Can I just share a couple of things with you? He's the only one that doesn't die a martyr's death. All of the other disciples die a martyr's death, but John lives his life. They try to kill him. They try to boil him in oil on Patmos, but he survives and he lives his life out. Is that right? Look it up for yourself, because love never fails. And he's, I believe, the only one at that stage that has revelation of the love of God, revelation of the grace of God, the goodness of God. He calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, just, if you read 1 John, in one of his letters he writes this, he says, if you don't know love, then you don't even know God. How, I was reading that and I'm thinking, what? And I don't think he's writing that to put us down. He says, what you need is a revelation of the grace and the love of God. That's not just doing and trying and stressing. Is that right now? Just wrap yourself in the promises of God and just bring... It can't be that easy. Well, that's what grace is, unmerited favor. You know, and you come to a place where you come to the end of yourself, that it's not stressing and striving and pushing and shoving and trying to make it all happen, but it's just relaxing. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So you wrap yourself in those promises and you just swing free. Man. Hebrew says there is a rest for the people of God. There is a rest. Faith's supposed to be a rest. It's not supposed to be struggle. It's supposed to be a rest. And I'll just close off with Ephesians again if we can. In Ephesians chapter 6. And look at verse 10. He says, finally, this is the end. Is, is that right? My, be strong in the Lord. Not yourself. But just be strong in the Lord. And then the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. But we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, stand. That's all he's asking you to do. Wrap yourself in the promises of God and just stand. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Let me give you one more scripture. My Bible says that God resists the proud, but gives more grace to the humble. 
In an age that's in love with its mirror, if anybody else fell in love with us, we'd get jealous. Is this too deep? Hello. It says, how about a little bit of humility? God resists. Same word as resist the devil. You're telling me God is going to resist me? All I'm telling you, if you're going to try to do it yourself in your own strength, then it's not going to be God. You may make it happen. You may not, but you're going to have to make it happen. Or you can just humble yourself. For God gives more grace to the humble. And I don't know about you, I need all the grace I can get. Man, I'm not that smart. I'm not that, I, I, I can't do it in my own strength. I need all the grace I can get. So hey, if you don't want to humble yourself, the world will humble you real quick. And I believe that's one thing with this pandemic. It's humbling a lot of people. Churches are shut. Businesses are gone. Is that right? And people that have made things work all of their lives, all of a sudden are saying, it's not working anymore. Do you have a word for me? I've got a word for you. Wrap yourself in the promises of God and just spring, swing free. Having faith in God and faith in God's word because he's not the author of these sickness and disease or this pandemic. He loves us and cares for us. And having wrapped yourself in those promises, swing free, just stand. Father, I just pray for the people out there watching. No matter where you are, there's no time or distance in the realm of the spirit. And I speak blessings over your life. If there's sickness in your body, I rebuke that sickness right now. If there's problems in your marriage or your ministry or your business, man, I just speak the blessings of God into your home and family. I call you the head and not the tail and above and not beneath. Whatever you turn your hand to shall prosper and succeed. The enemy shall no longer find opportunities to come into our homes and families and churches and rob and kill and destroy. Satan is the God of this world, but we're not in this world. We're in the kingdom of God. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that message. That was amazing. amazing. We're going to go into a time of communion. So if you want to grab your elements or if you already have them ready, um, if you've got your Bibles ready, that would be awesome. You can turn to the scripture with us. So do you want to start us off, hun? Yeah. Amen. All right, guys, we're in Galatians today. If we go to Galatians uh, chapter 3, and we're in verse 29. And the, what I really feel the Spirit of the Lord is saying today, it's about this month of February, this month of family and, and friendship. Um, it starts with the fact that we have been made a family with God, that He is now our Abba Father. He, we can cry out to Him as our Daddy God now. You know, He's not at a distance. We're not separated by sin the blood has cleansed us of all unrighteousness, and now we can come into the throne room of God, into the throne room of, of our Father, and enjoy everything that He has for us. And one of the blessings that we get out of this relationship we have, have with God, it's called the Abrahamic, Abrahamic Covenant. It means that everything that was promised to Abraham, the blessings and not the curses, become ours. We are now grafted into the family of Abraham, the family of the seed we are after of the seed of Abraham. And in Galatians 29, it says, if, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and is according to the promise. So that promise says that you will be blessed and your storehouses will be blessed. Your lands will be blessed. Your um, fields will be blessed. Your sheep will be blessed. So that's provision. That's protection. All of the things that God promised Abraham, which was outside of the law of Moses. So there was no law that needed to be kept. It just was a blessing from God, a one-way covenant. Nothing that was needed to be done, just faith, a response in faith. And it says here, if you are in Christ, you've made Christ your Lord, the faith response of yes to him, then you are heirs according to that promise. Amen. So we want to thank God today that we have been grafted into that. And we have all the promises and all the promises are yes and amen in Jesus. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for uh, the body of Jesus that was broken for us, and we take this cracker now in remembrance of that and all the promises that come with that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The scripture that's coming to my mind is Hebrews 11 and 6. Mm. must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You know, that's faith. Just believe that he is who he says he is. He's a rewarder. If you seek him, you will have everything that you need. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, Matthew 6, 33. And all these things will be added unto you. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness. 
who are you in him? And everything will be added unto you Amen. at the revelation of your identity. Amen. We drink the blood and we thank Jesus that we have been made just like him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Amen. That's good. Over to you. Amen. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday. We're glad that you were here and able to make it. We hope that you were blessed and impacted by the Word of God today and that you are enjoying this month of fellowship and that you are taking the opportunity to build connections, build friendships, and build family. This is the month of the, of the banner of friends and family, and we pray that you will take advantage of that. Um, and we just want you to, again, think about and pray about how you can sow into this ministry, how you can be a part of what God is doing in this ministry. And we look forward to catching up with you real soon. Amen. God bless you.